welcome to a special episode of the MC Knitting Adventures podcast. My name is Colleen. And my name is May. Welcome returning viewers and for those of you watching us for the first time, we're so glad you could join us. Today's video is a special video and it's all about car knitting. Colleen's going to talk about, uh, in detail I'm sure, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> uh, Colleen's going to talk about tips on maybe some patterns that you can take, Absolutely. Uh, maybe some items that you can take because I'm generally the driver and Colleen's usually the knitter. Exactly. So. Um, that works that way. So let's just get started. Now, if you like to drive with somebody who likes to be the driver, then that's perfect. If you are somebody who really wants to knit and you want the other person to drive, then some people say, well, offer to bring snacks and then maybe they'll let you be the person who's doing the knitting <laughs> in the car. Um, so that's that. So we're going to talk about a number of things about car knitting. There's lots of things to prepare and organize. And if you've got the stuff that you need, then car knitting is a, is a lot of fun. Um, so I'm going to talk first of all about some good patterns um, for knitting in the car because you don't want anything that's too detailed uh, and you want to make sure that you can handle driving because you don't want to miss scenery. Like I like to look at scenery when we're driving so I don't want to have my head down all the time. We talked about taking embroidery in the car and we talked about the fact that that wouldn't work because your head's down all the time. The same thing with crochet, I find, if you have to see where the holes are to put your hook in, it's a little different. So I find knitting works really, really well. Now, I just want to show you something. So I use this to organize my patterns. If we're going on a long trek, then I'll bring this with me because inside what I have are just whatever patterns I'm going to take. And then I've got it in a sheet protector so I don't spill anything on it. And then can just tuck it in. So let's say we're going on a long trip. I might have five or six patterns in there. But you wouldn't take this on a short day trip? No, on a day trip, I'm probably just taking one pattern. Oh, that's a great idea. It's great. It keeps everything in one space. You can stick it in a bag and it's great. So even if you stay in the hotel and that, you can take this up to the hotel room. Exactly. That's a great idea. Yeah, so I love that. Now let's talk about some good patterns and I've made sure that I've got some free patterns that will help you out. Some of them I'm going to be able to show you what they look like and you're going to hear a little bit of crinkling and that's because if the yarn that I'm using doesn't have any wool in it then I'll use a project bag. If the yarn that I'm using has some wool in it then I use basically a Ziploc bag. I'm sure there's a generic way of saying that, but it's a Ziploc bag that I use because I, I want to keep it I often wondered why you had Ziploc bags on the car. I thought, Colleen's got all these beautiful little project bags. Right. Why would she bring a Ziploc bag? So I'm a little glad you said that. Yeah, exactly. I don't want those moths getting in. <laughs> and especially if you're going to a place that we don't know. Like, we've gone some camping, and, I'm, and I've said to you, oh, there's moths. Exactly. I have said, don't want and the moths. And she sees my eyes bug out. <laughs> I'm like, no. So anyway, it's always good to have a little mix of those. So first of all, I want to talk about cowls because cowls are round and round and round, whether it's a double wrap, whether it's a single wrap, and it's great because it allows you to just go in a circle and it works well. You need one uh, needle and a stitch marker to hold the spot um, and then away we go. So there's one that I've been working on, which is the sock head cowl. And that's by Kelly McClure. And, and these you said were free patterns? This is a free pattern. I'm glad you reminded me. So this is a free pattern. Great pattern. If you've got a skein or, or a ball of a fingering weight yarn and you want to just use it up, then this is a great pattern. Now where would you get this pattern? Ravelry? or Ravelry is where I get it from. Yes. Okay. Yep. So I really am enjoying that pattern. And it's nice and easy. One size a needle, one size a cord, one size a needle. And it works really well. Now, you can see, look at the project bag. I have a lovely little camping project bag that I made. There you go. And it fits in there nicely. So what I've used, so in a project bag, you know there's no wool in it. This is 93% acrylic and 70%, I'm a math teacher, no. 93% acrylic and 7% PBT. Don't know what that is. But um, it's called Wisdom Yarns Wool Free Allegro. And this would be something you would just take on like a day trip or something Exactly. Like that. So let's take a look at what okay. the cowl looks like. So I've been working at it. So there's a nice deep rib and then you just work your way out. And this is like sock yarn, but it's it's beautiful. Soft, it's yes. nice and soft. So I really like this. A navy 
you know, turtleneck, black turtleneck, it's all good. It's going to be great. Now, since I'm not a car netter, you can just knit away and look out like that? Exactly. Exactly. Wow. And even if you're not, don't feel you're confident in that yet, then what you want to do, because this is good practice for you, you can either do it while you're watching TV or when you're in the car, is just knit a few stitches, then take a look, and then knit a few stitches and take a look. Because gradually you can feel whether there's a knit, whether there's a purl. These are all knit, by the way, when you're doing the main body of it. So it's just a whole lot of knitting. Great idea. Love exactly. That. So it's I really, perfect really in this like little bag. One. Did you make this little I did make project that little bag. bag? Yeah. Wow. So it's really a, what they call a sock sack is what that is. Um, and because I'm only using one skein of finger and weight yarn. Perfect I, size. It is perfect. And it's got our campers nice. on it. Yeah. Yep. So I like that. So that's one cowl. Now, when you feel like you're getting a, want a little bit more adventure, then you can do something that has some texture. And so I am working right now on a Myra cowl. There you go, and that's by Knox Mountain Knit Co. Now, I'm pulling out a plastic bag because guess what? This has another free in. pattern. This is not a free pattern. Okay, I better not hold it up then. Well, well you can hold it. It's still a nice one. <laughs> yeah. It's not free though? It is not free. Okay. But it is a brilliant pattern. Now, and you get that off Ravelry? Off Ravelry as well. So, this is Adam and Eve yarn by River City Yarns. And I love how this is knitting up. So, yes, there's texture, but you can, it's not too complicated. And so, what you may want to do is get the ribbing part done and then just start up to here. If you're new to car knitting, this might be a little bit more than you want, but if you think, oh, I'm up for a challenge, that this is a good thing. Okay, so this would be a challenging car knit or not? Advanced beginner okay. is what I would say. Oh, okay. Good to know. Great idea. So there's a couple of cowls, and I'm trying to do at least one free of everything that I'm mentioning. Now the next thing I'm going to talk about are hats, and um, the one thing with hats is you have to understand that once you start into the decrease, the circumference gets smaller. So what you can do, and these will make some noise, is you can either use some DPNs, there's five of them, um, so you can either use DPNs when it gets smaller, or some people use two circulars. So this is one circular yarn and you'll have the other circular. And then as it gets smaller, you just can do the two circulars together. And if you need to look at that, that actually might be a good tutorial for us to do, okay. is to how to knit with two circulars. Because um, some people I know, um, I know of one lady who works actually for a designer, she, that's how she does it. She doesn't do magic loop. She doesn't do anything of that. She just uses the two. Now, one hat free pattern by Kelly McClure again is called the Sock Head Hat. And it's the same idea. It uses a one skein of fingering weight yarn. It's got a really wide brim. It can be as slouchy as you want it to be. And once you get past the brim, it's just knit, 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 knit. Good car knitting. Good car knitting. Now, I don't have one of those on the go, but free pattern. Now, a bonus free pattern. Here's another free pattern. And that is called Rafa's Hat, and that's by Hohi Locatelli. And I'm kind of three quarters of the way through this hat, and I'm really liking it. Now, plastic bag, what does that mean? Moss. No <laughs> moss. No <laughs> moss. That's right. We're trying to protect it, and so it's okay. So here's how this one's working. This is a great pattern, by the way. It's mostly rib. And you just add a little bit of extra texture thing, but that is going to sit nice on that on your head. I think this is probably for one of the kids for um, Christmas at this point in time, or it may be for me. Love or the color. For you. I, it's called Tanzanite, and that is Estelle worsted, but it does have wool in it, so we have to make sure oh, we're okay. careful with that. Once again, Rafa's hat, free pattern. Now, so we've done hats, we've done cowls. Now let's take a look at socks. Um, here's a free pattern, which is a great pattern, and it's called Hermione's Everyday Socks by Erica Luter. Great pattern, I've done this pattern before, and it's free. Now, if you see it's coming out of my project bag, no wool. No wool, <laughs> that's No moths, right. no wool. Exactly, so now I'm not doing that pattern. Um, Hermione's Everyday Socks, free pattern. 
I'm doing the Katie Lou's sock pattern and I'm doing them two at a time. This is a great way to do it. If you do um, my suggestion, and it's only my suggestion, you can use DPNs if you want, but my suggestion is that you use Magic Loop or two circulars. And the reason why you do that is because, as we know, if you're using DPNs, sometimes one will fall. And then I say, oh no, and stop Mays, the car. Don't we pull over? <laughs> and Mays, Mays driving and I'm gone. <gasps> and she goes, what happened? And it's because I've dropped a needle. So and I, we have pulled over and we've got out of the car and we've had it. But you have to be careful when you pull over. Where exactly. You pull over because you don't want to get out of the car and have an accident and say, what happened? Oh, exactly. I couldn't find my knitting needle. <laughs> I know. Can you imagine the police? When you pull over, <laughs> you, you know, get an accident, what happened? Well, couldn't find my knitting needle. <laughs> I don't think that would go over very well. This yarn is the Premier Yarns Wool Free Brilliance or Brights. And I really like it. Two at a time, that's the way to go. But if you're new and you have never done two at a time, great class to take, by the way. But you can just do one sock at a time. Did you not do a tutorial on how to do two at a time? I did. So you might want to check that video exactly. out. Exactly. Yeah. Now, what I like about two at a time is that you're getting both socks done at the same time. But when you're in the car, you don't have to count rows. Okay. So because if I, whatever I'm doing to one sock, I'm doing to the other one. Now, obviously, when you get to heel flap, that kind of thing you do. But as far as the leg and the foot, you don't have to count it. Cool. So that's, I really, really like that. Now, another one of your project bags. Yes. That could be advertising for you. I don't know. But I don't know. <laughs> those are great. Look at that. And it's a little bigger. It is. That's same, right. same idea, only a medium size? Um, I think that's almost a large size, I would say. Oh, is it? Yeah. Now, I love what you, I love what you did on the inside. Look at that. There's little <laughs> minions in there. I love how you do that. Kind of I a know, fun it's thing kind of fun. Yeah. Well, that's great. Perfect. All right. So that's dealing with socks. Now, my last thing I want to talk about, it's a shawl. My suggestion is you find a garter shawl. There are a lots of different shawls on Ravelry that just use garter stitch. You may change colors. You may let the yarn do the work. Um, I know the Hitchhiker by my Martina Bem, paid for pattern, but it's great. Um, but what I wanted to show you was the Easy Goes It by Finicky Creations. Now this is with variegated yarn and I'm using, okay, tell me what you know. I know there's not going to get any moss in there. <laughs> That's right. There's wool in this. And this is not a Ziploc bag. It's a slide seal. I don't know what that means, but there we go. <laughs> so this yarn, I'll let you hold that Do you up. Do want me to explain slide seal to you? <laughs> it just means that you slide the seal. <laughs> it's just not Ziploc. <laughs> it's not the brand name. There you go. All right. So there's what that one is. This is Malabrigo Sock. And this is one of my favorite colors, Reflecting Pool. And I really, really like that. Yeah, I love the color of that one. So this one, yes, there's pattern, yes, there's texture, there's a little bit of lace, but it, it's nice because you can start off and it's not too bad. You can just check things off as you so go. So still a good car knitting. Still good car knitting. Now, I love that you knit because then I get to drive and just kind of, you know how when there's that like uh, comfortable silence? Yes. You knit away and I just drive and make the world go away. It's kind yep. of a nice feeling, isn't it? It is. And then every once in a while, may say, look, over there and we'll talk about things and get things sorted out so right. it's great now i do want to talk about uh the driving piece of it okay um, i love to drive as you know mm -hmm. um but a few years ago i would say maybe three or four years ago now um i used to do all these kind of things to figure out where my gas tank was like right. i would so i'd remember what side my gas tank was on and so i was with somebody that i worked a younger person the, the one day right. And she says, what are you doing? I was kind of, I said, well, i got to remember what time my gas tank is on. Right. And she says, really? She says, because on your dashboard, there's a gas tank, and I'll put a picture up here. There's a gas tank, as you can see, and see that little arrow that's there? That little arrow tells you what side your gas tank is on. Who knew? Exactly. Now, I've put this in a previous podcast, but I really think it's worthwhile to put it in again. Absolutely. Because Absolutely. To, I thought, does... Am I the only person in the world who didn't know that? <laughs> Did you know that? I, I didn't remember. until you told me. Isn't that amazing? I I've know. been driving all these years. Now, I think they're newer cars, but I'm, I'm talking newer cars within the last, I don't know, 10 years probably. Probably. 
but before that, we just anyway, probably remembered where they were. So check your car, see where your arrow is, and then you'll never forget where your gas tank is. Exactly. Well, I thought that would be kind of appropriate in a, since we're talking about car knitting and what to take in the exactly. car. Exactly. That's a great tip. Thank yes. you so much. Now, we've talked about patterns. We've shown a little bit of some work. And now what I want to do is talk about the things you have to take with you when you're knitting. And so I've kind of created a little toolkit, and I'm going to show you how that works. Well, I've got my knitting, I'm ready to go, but I want to make sure that I'm not going to be stuck. And why stuck? I mean that I don't have the right tool or accessory for the job. Now we've talked about hats and that you would have to remember you might need some double pointed needles. But what I'm talking about is all those knitting notions that you think you might need. So, Do you need stitch markers for your uh, car? Sometimes you do. Oh, okay. Now, what's really nice about my necklace is if you take a look, this bottom part is a stitch marker, so it will come all the way off. Now, you could put more than one on there, too. You could you? absolutely do that. So there's the stitch marker, and it just goes all the way around, and then it dangles like it's a lovely necklace. Voila. Voila. So I love that. So anyway... <laughs> You don't have to have one of these, but it's kind of cool. All right, now, what I'm gonna show you is something that I just found. I was at Walmart doing the groceries, like I do, and I found this pencil case, which is what this is. But the cool part about this pencil case is it's got a top that opens. So this part opens, and then there's a bigger portion, let's try and do this without falling, that opens as well. And so what it allows me to do is have things in the top that I might need to grab quite quickly, and then the other things might be something else that I need. Now, the other thing I want to let you know is, we're always at the dollar store mm -hmm. trying to find miniature stuff, and you can buy these at the dollar store. So they're just little... Screw tops? Screw tops. Those that are, are nicer. I have ones that are not screw tops. Oh. The lid, oh. oh. And I put... This is a little story. I put some beads in there, like little tiny beads. Oh, no. And they'll, you know what's going to happen here. Yes, I you? do. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. By her face, I can tell. And the lids come off all the time. So I had beads everywhere. Like these little, oh. Was it not, so when, you, when I saw those, I thought, oh, no. And then when they're screw top, perfect. So there just make go. sure when you buy that kind of thing, make sure that it's a screw top. All right. Let's start with the top and see what I've tucked away in there. So you just have to push to open it. Now, I have a tape measure, lovely tape measure, so, oh, so that's, <laughs> that's going to be that's helpful. a springy one, yeah. It is a springy one. So I've got that in the top because sometimes you want, especially when you're measuring a cowl or socks, you want to make sure it's okay. In here, this is called a, do you know what this is called? No, I don't. It's called a chibi. Oh. And in a chibi, it's by Clover. Now, some of these needles aren't by Clover. So these are darning needles. So I have some that are smaller and some that are for thicker weights of yarn, but that has all of those needles inside. How so did you know that was called a what? A chibi, because when you buy it, it says chibi on the top. Oh, top. okay. Yeah. Is that a brand name or is that for the item? It, the brand name is Clover, but the thing is a chibi, and if you ask me why, I don't know the answer. Okay. Okay. I'm going to find out why it's called a chibi. <laughs> all right, what else do I have? Now, I have a pencil in here because I like to check things off of my pattern, what I've done. And I don't want to take the chance of putting a pen in here and having it leak. So this looks like a regular pencil, but it is actually a mechanical pencil. And I've got three or four leads in there. Nice eraser on the end. So I help. love mechanical pencils. And yeah. if you're doing any kind of woodwork yeah. and marking, yeah. this is brilliant when I use it in my little workshop, wood right. workshop. The mechanical pencils, all I use. Yeah. The other ones are too thick and they don't get the line. Yeah. This is perfect. Now, I really like these ones because they look like regular pencils. And I used to, when I was teaching and giving students exams, I used to give them each a mechanical pencil, a mechanical pencil before their final exam. Now, these ones, because they look like an actual pencil, I only ever had one student actually head back to the pencil sharpener <laughs> and I had to say, stop, don't do it, it's a mechanical pencil. Oh. So the kids, the, the kids, my students always found that those were cool and That's they liked good. those. And you know what, speaking of school, this might be a great time to go to Walmart and look for these uh, exactly. items that are back to school, like yeah. pencil case kind of stuff. Exactly. Now, I did say to May, I, there's... I think there were three colors of these. And I debated and debated. I get stuck on color all the time. <laughs> and in hindsight, I should have just bought two. 
And then I could have one for in the car and one for here because I've got all these goodies. Now, this is a diaper pin. No diapers here, <laughs> but it's a diaper pin yeah. that cuts. <laughs> <laughs> there's time for that <laughs> there's time for that but what I find is if you're working with your knitting needle and you need to tighten it that end does the trick or if you get a knot in your really fine yarn that end will do the trick and the other thing is when it closes and it kind of has a safety part then it works really really well so that's that strange but true now the other thing is is I have this tool and May's going to put the name of it at the bottom because it has escaped me. I think, yeah. Right now, it's not there, but it will be. So it's You're having got, a senior moment. I am speaking of diapers. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so at one end, it has a point, and at the other end, it's a crochet hook. So if you drop stitches, you can do that. If you need to pick up something, you can use that. I love that tool. All right, so that's that. Now, all right, May, what are these? Earplugs. <laughs> <laughs> no. Are you sure? I'm positive. Lip. What else do you think they are? Um, I think you put a needle at the end of it or something. Yes, you put it at the end of the needle so your stitches don't fall. Or maybe don't before you go to off. sleep, you put them in your eyes. We could do that. <laughs> but no. So they're stitch um, needle stoppers so that the stitches don't come off. So oh, that's okay. in there. Exactly. Now, I have two things in here which do the same thing. So I have these scissors, which are just teeny tiny. They but could be in the Guinness Book of World Records for the tiniest pair of scissors. Not yet, because there's something else. They're different. small. They're small really small. This? These were we purchased at the dollar store. They're titanium ones. They're really nice scissors. Hmm. But that's good. Now, the other thing is, I bought these lovely. Now it looks like a dog, but it isn't really a dog. So what it is, there are the oh, tiniest scissors those ever. Are Guinness Book of World Records. There you go. Scissors. How cute! Where did you get that? These are Haya Haya snips, is what they're called. That's all you really need for thread. Or exactly. For yarn, I mean. But I know for some people, you might want something that's a little bit so bigger. So there's a little safety thing that slips in there like exactly. that? Exactly. Oh, look. So cute. It's a little look. puppy. And you can put that on your keychain, and you've always got a little scissors. There you go. <gasps> See so everything. either one. Sometimes you like, may think, well, that's not going to cut it. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's bad. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean it. It came out anyway. <laughs> that was a good one. Okay. So you might need bigger scissors. So. Now, what I got in here is another, um, this actually, I've got a hook, which would allow it to be a progress keeper, but this part would allow it just to be a stitch marker, which I could hook on my necklace. This is a cute little sheep down that it's in there. It's a little crab claw thing, isn't it? Like, what do you call those? Lobster claw. Thank That's you. That's what it is, lobster claw. Lobster claw. Yes. Lob there you go. Lobster. I it's know, a it something to do with a crayfish or a clawfish or something. Because it looks like that. Exactly. Well, we're just buying a thousand We today, are. We? we are. We'll get it all sorted <laughs> yes, out. Yes, we will. Okay, so all of those things go in the tops because they're easy access. All right, so now let's take a look underneath. And this has got a big space. There's lots of things to do. So, first of all, purple. Okay. <laughs> what is that? Um, I would think you put a needle in there. Yes, you do. So, it is, if, for example, with the shawl that I would do, there's a slit in the end here. You just stick your needles in there and it keeps the stitches wow, from falling like off. Like this. Just like that, yeah. And then it keeps them all in there. Exactly. Cool. Perfect. So, that's that. Just in case, if you think you might need them. What else do I have in here? I have a couple of cable needles. Um, and you it's not just that you need to do cables. There are ends that you can work with. You might hold some stitches. You can do all kinds of things. So it's kind of nice to have those just in case. Hmm. So that's in there. All right. Then I have this, which is a needle gauge. And it also has some measuring. So it's got inches on one side. It's got uh, centimeters on the other. And this is from the little red bin. Now, if I have a memory at all, yes. I think you have a necklace that does this. I do. And I debated on which necklace oh, to really? put on. Mm -hmm. So I have, because I love to wear jewelry, I have a necklace that has a needle gauge. I have a necklace that has a darning needle on it, actually. I just visualize you walk into the car like this. <laughs> so with anyway. all, the, all your 
all your jewelry exactly. that has all your gadgets. Exactly. <laughs> so needless to say, hence we have you my have to, lovely pencil yeah, You have to pick one. Of the exactly. Others. All right. What else do I need? Well, I need a little book. So this is lined and I have my pencil. So this is just what I usually do is whatever I'm bringing with me will be in this little book. And I keep record how many rows I did. Um, I don't right now have um, a row counter in here. And that's because all my row counters are taken up right at the moment. Um, but I might, if I was going to um, do this again, I might put, I'll put a row counter in there if I could. And you can just pick these up at the dollar store. All Absolutely. All this kind of stuff. Exactly. Now. Post-it notes. Why do I need post-it notes, May? I have no idea. This to is say, like a quiz show. May, here. take the garbage out. <laughs> <laughs> nope, not no. that. But what it does is if you are working down a pattern and you just put this on. So as you're working down a pattern, if you put that there. So some people like to put it under the row they're working on and some people like to put it above the row that they're working on. Well, so you just different. put it on the pattern to mark where exactly. you're at. Oh, that's exactly. Exactly. And if I'm using those um, sheet protectors, so the plastic things, um, then it's great. Then it sticks right on that. Exactly. Plastic. Great idea. All right. So I have five of these lovely little things. So let's talk about what we've got in here. With a screw on top. Screw on top. So first of all, I have bulb stitch markers. So those ones open and close, they can, depending on the size of the needle, they can slide along the needle and you can fit a number of them in here. Yeah, there's quite a few in there, surprisingly exactly. enough. Yeah. Exactly. These, these containers, I think, come in different sizes too. They do, but to be honest with you, I thought, oh, this maybe this won't work, but this is, this is really great. And I think, to be honest with you, I think all of this was $1.49. I know. Pretty bright. Start the car. Exactly. Start the car. Um, so this is another one of those locking stitch markers. Now these are a bit bigger, so you can't fit them all through. Um, you can't fit as many in, but those are great. Um, and I really, really like those as well. I think I've got it upside down, which is why it's not coming out very Now, tiny there. little baggies might work too. You could do that as well. I've tried that. I find that I can't find the bag I'm looking for. But in <laughs> this thing, I you think can really it might find. work. You can really see what's exactly. in there. Exactly. All right. So in the next one, make sure I've got it right side up. These are called split stitch markers. So you just kind of hook them on. And I had never really used one of those. Um, that much and then I was doing some crochet work and then I needed that. Oh. Mm -hmm. So I'm really really liking those as well. Now I have made some stitch markers and so these are just circular ones. These are the ones all you made? Yes I made all of them. And they're purple. Some of them are purple. Now what I did and this is a good tip is I put in all of them were purple except one. So let's say I was doing something lace in a cowl and there was a certain repeat, then I would put the purple ones all the way along and then I would use the other one, which in this case is a silver one, and I would use that at the beginning of the round. Cool. Yeah, trying to be organized. Yeah. There you go. Perfect. And just so other shapes don't feel left out, <laughs> here we have... And these are cocoa nets, and I really do like cocoa nets. So these are triangle stitch markers, and there are medium size. I'm going to throw them all over. <laughs> there are medium size ones, and they're small ones, but those are great. Just if you needed to keep an eye on something different. I know there's a tin can knit, tin can knits hat pattern, and it has a certain place where you have to do a different stitch and then you'd have the beginning of the round. So the triangle ones would say, do that garter stitch, I think is what it is, between the triangle and the triangle, and then when you get to the round one, then you're doing the other thing. Pretty good, these are all been great tips. I know, and it's so funny because I bought this thinking this would work great. I knew we were gonna do this video, and I thought, why have I not done this for myself? Well, you've had, so, other, you've had other things, like you've right. had a toolbox, you've, which right. is another great idea that right. somebody has suggested a toolbox. Right. Yep. And you've had plastic bags, and you've had uh, container, different containers. Now, I had one that was like a pencil case kind of thing, but everything was open, and so, all the stitch markers are all mixed up. All this was all mixed up. Like it just. And I like these. the fact that this is clear. 
Exactly. Because um, we used to use a lot of storage bins, too, that weren't clear. Right. And you'd have to put on labels. We'd lose the labels. Then we'd write right. on a marker. Then we'd change what was in it. And then it wasn't in what it said it was in. Exactly. And now we're tending to use storage bins that are all clear, too, because you exactly. can actually see what's in it. So this is a right. great idea. Right. So I am absolutely loving this. As I said to me, I think I may be getting a second one. <laughs> yeah, I don't know well, why you wouldn't. This is a great idea. Exactly. And it's not, I think it was $2.67 for the right. container. Right, right. And that'll save a lot of hassle in the car. It doesn't take up a lot of space. It can nope. fit in a bag. If you exactly. It can take exactly. it up to the hotel room or the cabin yeah. or wherever we go. Yeah. Now, one other tip that I'm going to leave you with is when you have... Excuse me for just a second. I'm just throwing things here. So if you have all of your knitting and you put it behind you, I'm going to sound like I'm just trying to make your life easier or more difficult. Be careful how you reach back. Oh. Um, I had ended up with a frozen shoulder and the physiotherapist that I went with said, you've got the soccer mom shoulder. I went, what are you talking about? And that's because moms who drive will reach back to grab something or reach grab to give the kid some food or reach back and it's that movement that can cause problems so and i do the same thing i reach back to get into the cooler right or to get into to there to get something or to exactly. grab a coat or a sweater exactly and then you always say to me don't reach back like that because Be you don't want to get that frozen shoulder so exactly make sure it's uh if you have it in the back seat right that it's handy or you stop the car yeah. you get out and get it. it's worth it yeah. so you don't have a frozen shoulder well back to being old you can always work <laughs> On one project and then when you have to stop to go to the bathroom then you can get a different project out that might be safe is that how you work it is that it, why is you're it? stopping <laughs> no really i had to go to the washroom oh, <laughs> oh okay there Perfect. you go so thanks so much for watching if you like what you're seeing give us a thumbs up comment down below how do you handle your car knitting is there any patterns that you really enjoy to do in the car i think if you have not done car knitting give it a try if you think well i have to watch everything i think you'll be surprised at the i mean it's kind of like when you drive and you have to look in the rear view mirror and come back it doesn't take long to look up and come back to your knitting and you can even pause and just do a couple stitches and then look up yeah and don't forget to subscribe and watch our other podcasts if you haven't already watched those and um until next time you take care <laughs>